Greetings again, friends. Well, in these videos, I am seeking to bring the truth of the Bible into the world where we live and to make the application that shows the power of the Word of God to all generations. So hang on today because we are going to talk about what I started on last week. Now, in America, we have freedom and it, our country is based upon freedom from the very beginning and foundations of the country. Uh, if you go back to America in the history, you understand that the Declaration of Independence is a, a, a very important document. And it's influenced many lives and impacted the world, really. And in that Declaration of Independence that... America wrote in claiming freedom from the tyranny uh, and the oppression of Great Britain, uh, we see these words uh, as, as it says there. Uh, it says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, these founders in America had a biblical framework, and that provided this document with the, the emphasis on there being a creator, and that the rights are given by our creator. So uh, the society then was more of a, a society that had respect for God and for Christianity. And so this goes back to the beginnings of America. But those three named rights uh, that are there, among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what I'm doing now in the video, and I'm on the second one, the right to liberty. Now, liberty is one of those things that uh, can be misunderstood, and, and we'll get to that in a minute. But remember, last time I did... The, the video, The Right to Life. And I uh, mentioned and talked about how that so many leaders in America are just not supporting life. And uh, you should go back and look at that video uh, that I just did last time. And of course, I was addressing it also with the issue of abortion. And I did that video called The Top Ten Lies of Abortion, which would be a good one to go see also. Uh, uh, the right that needs to be there for those babies to be born and not aborted. And that's a big battle going on right now, even in America and around the world still. Uh, but today we're getting into that second right, as mentioned there, the right to liberty. And liberty is just something that it, it's, it's, always, it's always being challenged. In, in every country, in every society, you have freedom and liberty being challenged constantly uh, because people want power. People want control. Um, they, they often end up in positions of power in governments and they make laws and regulations to control the people that, that are underneath them. And it takes away people's freedom or liberty. Um, now, Liberty is a gift that God has given to us. Uh, this, this right to liberty was understood by those American founders, and it, it's, it's about being free. Now, I wrote a poem about this that you can go and look at on my website, www.vtlessons2learn.com, or I actually read that poem in a video uh, called To Be Free. And uh, that poem really summarizes what liberty and freedom is. But just getting to this subject of liberty, you can go and look for a definition of liberty, and the basic definition is said to be the quality or state of being free. 
And so we know it's about freedom. Freedom and liberty is something that we all want, but we have we often take for granted if we have it. And right now we're in danger in America of losing a lot of liberty and many other countries around the world. Because do you know what's going on even as I'm recording this video? Uh, from the 22nd to the 28th of May, there are 194 member nations meeting in Geneva, Switzerland for the World Health Assembly. Now, this is the 75th year of the World Health Assembly. They're even broadcasting this where you can watch it live as I looked up to see. But there's something going on this year that is very troubling. And it is something the United States in the current administration has gotten on board with. And basically, th this is the first meeting they've had since the COVID-19 pandemic. But basically, they are looking to give authority to the World Health Organization to have mitigations on all the member nations, all 194 nations, that they would, that they would give their sovereignty over, that they would uh, let the World Health Organization tell them what they should or shouldn't do in the case of a pandemic or something. Now, that's troubling. That's serious. And some have even recommended that the attorney generals in the United States should be passing laws and filing suits on this so that the states can individually be exempt from this federal uh, joining in with the World Health Assembly. And there's also been concerns about the World Health Organization and its roots in China and how that could be a, a means of controlling and taking away more freedoms because there's a lot of places around the world where government leaders uh, don't want freedom. I mean, look at what is continuing to go on in in Russia and in the Ukraine with Russia attacking them and, and wanting to take away the freedom and, and uh, just make it be a part of what Vladimir Putin wants and, and what is going there. And, and this happens all over because liberty is constantly being challenged. But you, you need to really pray about what's going on with this World Health Assembly uh, as far as it may be taking rights away. You know how many things were taken for granted and removed or taken away. Uh, I know it happened here in America where, where they shut down businesses and, and kept people inside. And, of course, the, the, all the mitigations with masks and and requiring vaccinations. And we've learned since that some of those, um, well, we've learned from the own reports of the CDC in America that, that uh, the, the uh, masks were not effective at stopping the virus. And we learned that the people who got the vaccinations could still get it and maybe even pass it on. So, so a lot of that was just pushed and really there's been pushed back from many people in America on that too. But around the world, it's, it's going on and, and do not, do not mistake. They're, they're going to use this again. This was such an effective way of controlling people and making them compliant with what leaders wanted them to do that they're going to use it again, particularly as you come toward political uh, times where there's going to be uh, a chance of change, like in America this fall when there's the midterm election. So uh, this, is, this is interesting stuff, and it's going to continue, and liberty is going to continue to be attacked. Now, we, we are told in our Declaration of Independence in America, that we are to, we have this right, and that it's given by God, and it can't be taken away by others. So, you got to fight for it. You've got to fight for liberty. You've got to take a stand, and people in America need to do this for sure, especially in lieu of what's going on on the world stage, and even what President Biden had had said he wanted 
uh, to be the case in leading the way in, in letting this organization, the World Health Organization, make decisions for all the countries involved. So, friends, this is, this is a serious thing. But I want to get into some particulars in the Bible about liberty. Now, as I, as I looked this up, there were, there were some 23 references using the word liberty. Uh, there were 117 references using the word free or freedom or uh, something with free in it, a word. And so I looked at all those verses and, and there's so many good things there in relation to what the Bible says about liberty and freedom. And of course, this is where uh, the founders in America got that right being given by God, uh, as they said, by the Creator, uh, that, that, that inalienable right. But we know liberty is given by God. And we'll first look at that because He, he gives us choices. God gives us choices to make. Often in Scripture, He gives a choice between blessing and cursing and tells what consequences are. We People have choices in their life. You know, we, we're limited by laws of nature. We're limited by what God puts parameters around, but we have a lot of freedom and freedom to think a certain way and to make choices and... and um, you know, I did a video, it didn't get a whole lot of views then, but you might go back and look at it called Choices and Voices. And of course, there's lots of voices trying to get you to choose them and, and their way, their understanding or whatever. But we need to be looking at the Bible and what the Bible says about anything and about liberty in particular. Now, we see that God gives us the liberty um, in giving and we often uh, will see in the Bible the, the, the phrase free will offerings. And that was, that was common in, in the Old Testament and looking at those verses. Let me just give you one of them in Exodus 36, 3. It says, And they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continued bringing to him free will offerings every morning. Now the free will offering was not an obligation that they had. It was just to be given out of their personal choice and desire. That's really the way that God wants us to give at any time. And, and in today's uh, age, the church age that we live in, it's actually what God uh, speaks about in the New Testament where it talks about grace giving. To give hilariously is the word comes from that word. So just give freely. But the free will offerings were common in, in the Old Testament system. And uh, you look at Leviticus twenty two twenty nine, where it says, And when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, offer it of your own free will. So God wanted people to choose to sacrifice. He wanted them to have the freedom to do so or not. Now, God's going to judge everyone on the choices they make, but, but you have freedom from God to be able to do this. Now, you have freedom in the way you live and choose to live. And, of course, in the Bible, there, there is the admonition from, from people like David in Psalm 119, 45, where he says, And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. Now, of course, seeking God and His Word, what He said is walking in liberty if you have liberty from your sin. And that's the problem. Um, <clears throat> because people, people promise liberty to you in order to control, but, but you really can't, you really can't have a person give you liberty because God is the only one that gives liberty and he's the only one that can free you from sin. Now, an interesting verse in relation to that is 2 Peter 2, 19, which says, while they promise them liberty, 
they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. Now that's a good verse to think on further. And whatever whatever uh, power, substance, thing, person overcomes you, uh, that's that's going to be what you're a slave to. Whatever you give over to, that you'll be a bondage to them. But God wants us to be free from sin and its power and 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 what it does to us. He allowed man to have the freedom to choose. And of course, Adam made the wrong choice. And because of Adam's choice, we all suffer, as Romans 5, 8 has said, but uh, because that sin passed on to us. But God wants liberty to be what we focus on. And he wants us to have liberty from the power of sin. Now, an interesting verse that Jesus himself quoted uh, is from Isaiah 61, 1, and it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Now, we see this again, as I said, Jesus Jesus was in the synagogue and picked up the scroll and turned to this to this verse and we see in Luke 4:18 where he quotes it and says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and of course we see there even after Jesus had spoken that, uh, where he said that that was fulfilled that day in their eyes as he read that because he applied this to himself. He is the one that came to proclaim liberty. And of course, Jesus did come so we could have liberty from our sin and the effect of sin and the, and the consequence of it. Uh, John 8, 32 is a good verse there. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, what is this truth? Uh, it's the truth about Jesus Christ, about how He came to pay for sin. Um, we, we know that... <clears throat> Uh, John eight thirty six says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So you are certainly free from sin when you trust that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, that He was buried, and that He rose from the dead, proving He's God. So this is, this is the gospel. It's the good news because we can be freed from these habits and sins and things that bog us down and hurt us in life. And many other verses you could go to to look at that, but uh, Romans 6, 7 is a good one. And it says, for he who has died has been freed from sin. When you, when you trust Christ, you die to your, your sin. You, you uh, are freed from that sin. You, you uh, are, have died to it, so it makes you free in Christ. And Romans 8, 2 also says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So we know that God wants you to have liberty. He wants you to have freedom. And 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So friends, God wants you to have liberty and freedom over the power of sin, and He will give that to you. But it is a responsibility when you have that liberty and recognize you have freedom in Christ. You will not have judgment on your sin because Christ took the judgment. When you receive that, He forgives you for your sin. So, but you, 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 you still have a choice personally to yield to your old nature or your new nature as as Romans talks about in in six and seven there's some good things there uh, with talking about the choice of yielding 
Um, but but we know that <clears throat> the responsibility of liberty is for you to not use it to uh, to hurt other people or to even trip yourself up. So let's look at a few verses there. First Corinthians eight nine says, "But beware, lest some." somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. You have freedom in Christ, but you don't need to let the freedom cause other people to stumble. So think of that responsibility there. Galatians 5.1 tells us to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. God doesn't want you to yoke up again with your old nature. He wants you to live in the freedom of the new nature and the freedom of the Spirit of God in you when you trust Jesus Christ. Galatians 5.13 says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Now, of course, that's a verse tied to what I talk about in the top 10 lessons to learn in Serve One Another, that Galatians 5.13 is a great verse there, but it says we're called to liberty, but our liberty is not to just cause others to stumble uh, or to cause ourselves to stumble and just uh, feed our old nature, our sinful flesh, but it is something that we're supposed to use to just freely serve and give uh, other people. Uh, another verse that is good there is James 1.25, and it says, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. So James refers to liberty as the perfect law of liberty, and, uh, and someone who works out their faith, as James says in his book. So this liberty that we have is the liberty of salvation that God offers you. Friend, if you are bound by some habit or by some sin in your life, you need to make sure of your salvation. You need to, you need to be sure that you have freedom in Jesus Christ because you have forgiveness of sin. And God wants that. Jesus Christ wants you to be free. And, and the appeal, even in the last book of the Bible, is this. As you get toward the end of the Bible, you come to Revelation 21.6. And, and it says, and he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of, of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. God wants you to experience an abundant life and He will give this to you freely when you come and trust Christ. And, and Jesus' appeal is that He died and you need power over your sin and He wants people to come to Him. He wants people to choose Him. That's really what He gives us, that choice to be able to, and even though we're sinners and we're going to choose to sin until we come to faith, we, we have an ability to choose somewhat limited, but when, when Jesus has been lifted up and, and when the Spirit of God prompts you to, to come to trust Christ, you need to respond. You need to, you need to trust Him. And of course, we see in Revelation toward the very end of the book, Revelation 22, 7, 17 says, And the Spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. So it is free to any who come. 
And friend, if you need to come to Jesus and accept Him, please do so today. And if you have, be responsible and don't use your liberty to just fulfill your fleshly desires. Don't use your liberty to cause other people to stumble. Make sure that you are standing in the liberty and living by the precepts of the Word of God. And be certain that you are praying for the liberty that needs to be there for the gospel to go forward and not be limited as people would want it to be or the devil wants it to be, even through some mitigation of a health organization, as they did in America, trying to shut down churches and people who wanted to worship God still, and even arrested pastors in Canada and other places because they they simply still met. Oh, uh, friends, you need to pray about this too, that we have the right that God has given us of liberty. So I trust this video has been helpful to you to understand the world and understand the word. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, share, share this with other people too, and hit the notification bell so you'll be ready when I go to the next lesson, and likely it will be that third unalienable right that the Declaration talks about next time. Thank you for watching.